Hello and welcome along once again to another edition of the Left Wing Back Podcast with me, Kevin Regan. It's episode 6 of my time in the Gansey already. It's hard to believe the series is absolutely flying along. And today we visit Nave Breed and we talk to a man who has joined me in the commentary box previously and he's captain Nave Breed to a Senior Hurling Championship in 2004. We talk about the trials and tribulations of captaining sides in county finals both the victory and in losing. We have a nice few chuckles along the way again like previous episodes and many of those stories are very interesting including one in particular which I'll give you a little teaser on a guy gets injured in Netwatch Cullen Park gets into the back of an ambulance is told to go to Kilkenny and gets out and goes to Carpenters on the way doesn't make it to Kilkenny just a flavour of some of the funny stories you have to look forward to along the way Stephen of course played County Hurling up as far as 2001 had a bit of an exile between 95 and 2001 which we'll go into at the start of the episode but plenty to look forward to here all in association of course with our kind sponsors Corcoran Precast Tanks Stephen good to talk to you um, many a good time we had in a press box for various things, all so Auckland, I suppose, is the one that sticks out with ladies' football and some mighty days. But um, we're here to talk about your time in the Gansey, and obviously, you represented Club and County with distinction. And I was just doing some research the other day. County up as far as 2001, I, I thought you um, retired a little bit sooner than that. Yeah, Kevin, I, I did. Uh, 95, um, that was a it was a day. Um, the last game I played was against Westmead in the Championship in Carlow. Um, not not on my finer day is probably the worst I'd say. Uh can see the six goals and um two if not three I'd say probably my fault. We lost six six to I think we lost by a pint, however next that up to three, however. and just a, a a bad day at the office and unfortunately final day. Um yeah, so it was the one and I came back. Uh Pat Fenland, there was no sub goalie for Pat Fenland and there were I think it was was it intermediate? I'm not sure tomorrow. It wasn't it wasn't senior, but it was could be intermediate. They, were, they played um Kerry in a couple of games below in could be Nina, could it went it went to two or three games and uh that was yeah, so at least I suppose I got to come back. I didn't get to play but that wasn't the end of the world. I kinda thought in ninety five just with the great win over me that earlier that year two weeks previous I'd say in at Boy. And it was actually the first time Carlo had beaten Meath in the championship. And Meath that year had actually beaten Wexford and Offaly in Division 2. An early campaign, I don't know, I can't remember exactly, but it was not spectacular. And actually the day above in Meath, Johnny Cavanagh got sent off at about 20 minutes. And we were down to 14 men. And we got two goals in the next two minutes. And they kind of gave us a cushion for most of the game. Uh, so I remember that, that year finally... And sadly as well, but that's that's the way sport goes. So the good and the bad. And unfortunately, the game against Westmead by losing that, we lost out on having a home game against Wexford. So I think I think actually Westmead played Wexford in Carlow in two weeks' time after that. If I'm not wrong. So yeah, that day though, I don't know if it's as bad as you're making out. It's probably just one of those things where you think it went a lot worse. But I mean, when you're playing in the goal, that's that's the nature of these things. Um, some days, you know, I suppose you're, you're partial to a mistake, everyone is, but it's just noticed that bit more, obviously, playing in the goal. What's the story regarding you playing in the goal anyway? I mean, you obviously went into it at an early age, but what was the, what, what made you make that bad decision? Yeah, well, just to finish off the 95 one, actually, that day, um, you might remember Blackburn were looking to win the league title, and uh, I remember after the match, I didn't even go off the meal with the, with the team, I was just, I was devastated and, uh, and we were in all Auckland's after the boys had come back over, I think, and uh, Benji, if you know Benji O'Brien, Benji's a fanatic Man United supporter and Man United were looking to, I can't remember the match that day, but they had to beat West Ham or get a better result than Blackburn had against Liverpool and the boys kind of pointed out Benji was in bad old form after United not winning the winning the league and the boys said, look over that lad over there, so I was the... This was real life, but anyway, um, back to playing the goal. I ended up in a hurling wise. I remember TC Clark either didn't turn up, I think he didn't turn up to a match. He was in goal the week before. We played a match below on Michel and it was corner forward. I scored a couple of goals, but that was under 14B. I don't remember who it was against. And uh, next day, TC didn't end up coming, and I ended up in the goal. Probably didn't, probably too nice to say no, and ended up in it then for a fair duration after. So and the same with the football. I can't can't remember playing the goal first in the football. A schools match. 
was in primary schools. Uh, I was in it in sixth class and we lost the schools final to Newtown on the top pitch in Bagnestown. I know that, I remember that all right. Lost me with four points, so. It's always the ones you lose that you tend to remember, but I mean, we have a lot to get through with this. You've, you've, you've quite a story to be fair, but just to refer back to the county stuff there, you were on the Carroll team that won the All-Ireland B in 92 as well, so that's obviously a very fond memory. Yeah, look, it came onto the panel in 91. Um, oh, the way that came about, like with, with, in hurling Carroll, you probably have only, like you said, a six or seven clubs would say at adult level at the time, and like there's only one goal in each, and I, I can't remember the logistics of it, but Brian Lawler was on the panel, and I've been on a couple of years at this stage, and he, he said to me, would it be interesting going into the county panel? He said, there's no, there's no backup goal here, I'm not sure exactly, but anyway, I ended up going in, and the first game I played was against, though the, the trend that time, like times have changed, the county team were training under lights, in the rugby club in Carlow, um, probably a Wednesday and Friday night, I think it was, and um, like different times, like the lights were, they were good for the time, but not great either, so that was where their trend was, and we ended up, played Monaghan in the first league game we played, and we ended up got, got beat in the dollar in the B final that year by um, Westmead up in Crow Park, which was before the first replay of Dublin and Meath in their saga in the 91 Leinster Championship. And I'm going to keep saying times changed, like, but like that, we, we were playing Crow Park before 60 something thousand again, the match was over. And uh, I have a track so here still, and, uh, and Eve just wonder why I wouldn't throw it out. But we actually had to pay a fiver towards getting a track so and a gear bag that, that time for to play in Crow Park. And it was actually 60, whatever the capacity of Crow Park was in 1991, that was in it by the time our game was finished. So, yeah, right in 92 then. Uh, I think we played Armagh first up in, now at this stage Richie Keighley had been on the panel and Richie was a fantastic goalie so he was he was now in the goal and I was understudied home and Richie, you wouldn't get sounder than Richie, solid as a rock and uh, be Armagh comfortably in the first game, that was away, I don't know where exactly Armagh could have been in Keighley, I'm not sure, semi-final then was Crow Park against Wicklow and that was, that was before I think two Leinster's quarter-finals maybe in football and uh, won by a goal, I think maybe a goal and a point, it could have been one fifteen to 14. And um, so that meant Westmeath then in the home final in Tullamore. And like two epic matches up in Tullamore, like and Tullamore like, has been great for Carlo in the latter years there. Like, I'm just saying last year with the, the relegation match up there, I like, can never forget that. And like, the year before with the Carl of Eden Kildare up there and Carl of One Oller and B hurling up there or B football, they've won the Christy Ring up there. I, I played my first minor match with Carl up there, so if you're ever getting the, the ashes scattered at Tullamore could be high up the <laughs> pecking order. And like the match the matches were they were outstanding matches like and you know you had at that stage, the winners of that got to play an all Ireland quarter final, I think, against uh, Galway and there was nothing in the, in the game, like both games were I think Carlo, we won by four points in the wind up the second day, but like, they were, like any game, that's what you got when you're on top, like, and you had like some Mark Mullins, Joe Head, and these lads on top of their game, Nevin, like, just names roll off your tongue, like, they were, and the same with other team, like, you had Ger Jackson, you had uh, Sean McLaughlin, David Kilkine, David Kilkine, like, first all-star from Westmead, and, like, Carlo had to beat them, that got, Goss over to London then in 92, over to Rice Slip to play London and London had beaten Carlow in 97 in the, in the final in Carlow and probably something similar, two or three points in I think as well to the our win over Westmead and there would have been still a couple of players probably, I, I, I'm guessing Tom English a few more were still on the team you know in 92, it was only five years later but um, game there was nothing in it again. Another, I think we won't be two points. Kieran Jordan came off the bench. I think he hit a couple of vital scores and savage Carlo crowd. All right, and I remember actually just coincidence now. Neve is related to the Gunner. Can I, Kevin? You, you might have heard tell him Lauren yeah. Lachlan. The Gunner, I think, funded a trip. He he uh, he sold. Um, he got uh, headbands in York. I think he met him up himself. And I think he funded a trip solely on that. So. That was a savage weekend, like we, we ended up coming back to Carl on the, the Monday night and 
we had a there was a thing in the market square and up there to dives the shamrock where it was at the time and we ended up back in the royal hotel after and john mcdermott like was great businessman a great sports follower in carlo and any of us that were left there at the end of the night were point of rooms and no bother and it was great great night because the fiver was uh was a uh, was spent then. <laughs> yeah well the fiver was the previous year they can't would like just about things changed too like the following year I don't know whether it was supporters club not got involved or but we got you know we, we got kid oh we got suits and now definitely to go to London and we got McGee's men's wear we got the finest we got you know we we're, were very well looked after but things were changed probably slowly but like um as I said about the sixty whatever thousand in Crow Park here before like there wasn't the, the crowd in the Galway game then in Carlo was probably the biggest crowd in Carlo a Carlo hurling game I'd say since the 60s probably when they were on you know they were your father always said when Carlo had a good team and you know they were competing against Cork and these teams in the in the National Hurling League and uh, you know and like that day against Galway <coughs> um, like Mark Mullins I think it's six points in play could have been off Tony Keady I know Galway, Galway's first game was always going to be the the game against the All-Ireland B champions and a warm-up to the the All-Ireland semi-final. But um, like you know, Anthony Cunningham, know that day was I think I think was very good for for Galway. But um, even you no know, to build up to that, I had a bit of a as I said, Richie was in the goal and there was no danger of Richie being in the goal. Barry was injured and <clears throat> we were told not to train with our clubs. And of course, I didn't listen to that and. Parnells were training about a week before and it was in O'Loughlin and I went for a ball same you go for any other night and Huey Fitz and Mick Roach myself ended up going for the ball and one of their herds come across and split my thumb I'd say I'd say I was probably fractured but I'd, I was afraid of getting done with it because I didn't want to miss out and I was only going to be sitting on the bench but by God I was praying for the whole hour and ten minutes of that match that Richie Keely wasn't going to get injured because I wasn't able to hold the hurl and I hadn't told anyone I know a thumb is a, it's a fairly important part of your hand when you're holding a hurl. And uh, to finish off the Galway game, then uh, the match was finished and they like, put a good display. And like Galway had lost, or Galway, Galway were that time the two all earns and the and that 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 team had between them. And uh, but a funny thing after the match, like the lads were swapping jerseys on the field, and you know the players. 15 was swapping with two or vice versa so we were in the dressing room just after the match and a young a young Willie Hickey Pat, Pat was still on the panel at the time like and Pat as I said would have served a long time with Carlo was probably involved in 87 but uh, Willie stuck his head in the door now I don't know why age Willie Hickey was 28 years ago probably about 10 but he says hey lad do you want me to swap the goalie's jersey with the sub goalie for Galway says, here says so I'd Willie the jersey and it's uh, 30 seconds later and he popped with the number 16 for me so I thought you were going to say he ran off with it. And <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't know Willie that well, and what I've heard since, he probably could have rob, ran off with it. But I don't know whether the Galway goal, he actually got his one. Yeah, yeah good, good times, good memories. And uh, obviously we featured James in the series as well, and he had some great stories. Uh, passionate, passionate men down there, no doubt. And uh, obviously, lads, that you had a lot of battles with. You mentioned London in that time in 92 as well. A few interesting stories with, with that, I believe. Yes, we went over on the Saturday. We went over early on the Saturday morning. And, like we had a poke around on the Saturday evening. Basically, get your boots wet in the field. It was a bit of a, it could be a bit of a wet evening. I'm not sure, but I remember our boots were wet the next morning. But anyway, uh, I was roomed with John Carey and uh, Martin Fitz says, like he said, he says if you want to have a couple of pints, no problem. Two pints, no more. If you're used to having a couple of pints before a match, no bother. And in fairness, no one had any more than two pints. That's that. That's a, a state I hear now. But two pints of Stella Artois to John Carey. Uh, I I, had a, you know, I was trying to get three year old into the bed. No, that's the truth. Um, Carey's a character, like and, and uh, but uh, I remember that night we go back up to the room and I I, I thought, Jesus, please, please next morning come to get this game going because this lad. This lad is going mental here, but he was just, you know, he was wired up, literally wired up, two pints. Uh, but anyway, the game worked out well the next day, so I said that was, just proved one thing anyway, some drinks are stronger than others. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to quote the saying, talk though, I'd have a few questions. Um, so in terms of moving on from that then, I mean, I'm interested in the club side because 
you had a lot of success and a lot of heartbreak in equal measures. The early part of the 90s mightn't have been so kind in that I think you were captain of the Parallels in 94 when you lost to Michael in the final. And then obviously there's a big breakthrough for an air breed in 96 and all Auckland won the Intermediate Championship the same year. So you had a nice little double to enjoy that time. Yeah, look, we lost both in 94. We lost Intermediate Football to Clonmore. Fully deserved Clonmore, like the blue so the water in the second half. We weren't fit. And they were flying fit, and Padraig Gras was savage in the goal for Clamor in the second half. But the, the, the match went any longer. We were, I think we were beaten by seven points. I don't know whether we, we might have only scored once in the second half. That was '94. The the '96 final in the Blues, we we got a bit of momentum. We beat Lachlan in the first round, only by two points. Typical local derby. So we just got a bit of rub of the green that year. We I think we beat could have been and Kildavan on the way to the final, and we beat. The Blues in the final in 96. Um, we learned a soft goal early on. I would have read a soft. Um, I, I had said to the Doc Hughes, I said, say the night before, I said, I need to make a clean sheet in, in a championship game we've won. Five minutes in, anyway, I was having a sheet. He said, looking at one other in pack, having to come in and punch the ball to the net. And so that that was that statistic on if we were going to win, we are going to win with conceding one. So we, 94, Parnells, um, we would have been a younger young team, like we're going back to it. We would have had a, a a good underage career out of nowhere, as in going back to 1982 or 83. There was no hurling, there was no juvenile hurling at under 12 level in the par in in uh, Parnells anyway. And Eddie O'Sullivan and Mick Murphy came along, and they were basically a two man team running a juvenile club, and that was 1983. At, Think a two a three we we played John Tindall's would have been possibly the underage hurling team for one year or two I'm not exactly sure but remember we played in in uh, the outside pitch in Doctor Cullen Park with forty two lads talked over for an under twelve match and you could be on three subs there was no goal games everyone gets a game that wasn't the line at the time so you had fifteen playing at twenty seven on the line and three were coming on the subs and they decided to pick one from each. Village and I was the one who was picked from all Auckland to go on. So I was still, what does that have, 24 in the lane. So then we got to a B under 14. We won under 14 B in 85. And then we lost a couple of under 16 Bs. But under 16s were kind of thrown in at the end of the year when there was no, there wasn't much um, thought to the competition. I think the under 14 was run well, but under 16s weren't. And that team then there was probably five, four or five of that team. Won a minor then in '87. We won. Uh, we won the minor B against Ballinabrana in a. Was it go back to another local derby? Nothing in it. Four or five points. Two points most of the way, and we ended up winning by a, uh, four points, I think, or five. And we, we ended up that time. If you won the minor B, you ended up in the minor A semi-final against the top team. So generally, the top team would usually take care of the B team. But Michael, we were playing Michael, and. Des Murphy, John Bourne, Sean Foley, all savage hurlers would played with and against and it was the first day I think um like Eddie, o, Eddie O'Sullivan like was I thought would be, he was exceptional. He he had a way of he'd either make you want to play hurling or not, one or the other. And that sounds a bit blunt, but if you played for him, the rewards were good. If you didn't, you didn't like the, he could put you off maybe playing. That, as I said, that could be a bit strong point of view, but um, he would have told us like we're as good as anything in the county and that day we proved it we, we beat Michael be five or six points and actually my father here was he was probably what he was 68 or 69 he was retired out of the quarry and he was he missed that game going to it because he was herding sheep at Luke Mean and got driven over the ditch over here at the ring war from the football field in all Auckland like, uh, the, that time used to graze the, the pitch actually with the sheep and um he he had three or four broken ribs and he I came in after the semi final and, and he says to me, Well how much is Beppy? And I says, We won't be so it was ten for high, it won't be two fifteen to two ten or whatever it was. And then he says, I suppose Michel wouldn't have a great team every year. <laughs> so they weren't going to get carried away anyway. But we won the final then as well. We we beat Carrotown the final for nine points down after I think ten or fifteen minutes it was two four to one point and we won't be I think one ten to two five. Jerk having seven red points. Phil Meany 
But I was an unlucky captain a couple of times. Phil Maney was the best captain you could ever get. Because he kept captain the minor football B, minor hurling B, minor hurling A, and then the following year, under 21 hurling. So that was 94, 96, um, up to, we joined up, say, with, with, with Balnebran in 96, then with the, now Breen and Parnells, or Parnells and St. Finnell's coming together. So you had, you had the likes of Keel and Delaney, Andy Dolan, Robert Sheen, Peter Brennan, Martin Caton, and Mark Caton was at the end of his career. These lads, you know, you were cutting sods at one another, now you were going to play on one another, and the mix worked, like the, that year, the train and Christy Kyo came on board, he was the Wexford manager in 93, they lost the league final after two or three games. How did that come about actually? How did Christy Kyo end up in their breed? Having yeah, I think Mick Doyle, Mick Doyle would have been the link there, um, a good Wexford supporter, and uh, I think that's, that's now that was a, it was a major, Cool, I would have said at the time because I knew Christie was on Wexford teams that lost all their finals in the seventies, late seventies. The bit of the nerd in me would have known that, and would have known who he was like, you know. But geez, he was a big man, a lovely man, like uh, he he must have been six foot three, like he was a ma must be a massive proposition corner forward. Like he was corner forward at Wexford, like, uh, and he lost the last two count, two all in finals. Um, and he said at the start of the year, the trend we do will be the very same. I don't want Wexford. Nothing more, nothing less. And uh, it'll start on time. You're on time, it starts. If you're late, it still starts at the same time. And uh, all I will say is that the hill at the back of the goal in Ballinabran has stood to us in the last uh, 10 minutes of the county final because we, we were just... Against set ones. Now against set ones, yeah. And, and you said three penalties in the semi-final against Michael, you were telling me one time as well. Well, it was earlier on. It was in the... That was in the, the group stages or whatever. The group stages, yeah. And yeah. kind of both teams were missing a good few players the same night, but still Niall was full back, Des was full forward, that sort of where you had big characters and like Des was a serious handful. Big characters and big men. Big men, yeah. And like Des got the ball in his hand, there was only really one option, that was to pull him down if you could. And that night he was pulled down three times, like a bit like our Lord. But uh I think I saved the two first two penalties and Brian, Brian Murphy hit the last one out of the bar. I don't think he even went for a goal. But sometimes there was shadow boxing like in the early rounds of the championship if, if teams were kind of guaranteed getting to the semi final. So, right, it was great to beat Michael. We'd only done it once as Parnells. And actually, back in the Parnells days, you, you were getting. It was like those turkey shoots against Emmons and Michael. And you just every year he got a bit stronger every year. And, you know, you just got a bit closer to. Maybe beat them in a game, and then like in '94 semi final, we beat Sam Hollins. Possibly the first time we ever beat him. I'm not sure, but um. so let's go back to '96 final. And sorry, I sidetracked you slightly. Um, Sam Hollins, as we mentioned, the the, the proposition, um, strong, strong opposition. And uh, Pat Cody was talking about this on a previous episode. Uh, a, f a funny reference, I suppose, going up to Nevin saying, better men than you have tried. And I know he regrets that. He feels quite embarrassed about it. Uh, he's, he had a bit of a laugh about it since, you know. But what was the game like itself? Right, the game, like, um, well, leading into it, you would say we had a bit of experience going into it. As in, well, Robert Sheen had played in, in one final with Ballinaran. That was back 10 years before that. Probably five or six of the the Lachlan, Lachlan lads had played in the final against Michael two years previous and there could have been seven or eight of the team would have won minor medals with either Parnells in 87 or St. Fintons in 89 and so county final day wasn't new but like okay new and going out and focusing and trying to win the game like we, we lost to Michael two years previous who were getting I think they were, that was their Four title in a row, I'm not sure, maybe fifth. I think it was their fifth actually. They were just winning title, they were doing enough to win titles, knew what to done knew what had to be done to win the title. Um like we had the semi final against Carltown, we won we won probably seven rare points. We were in Bagnestown that time, the semi final, some of them I know definitely ninety four or ninety six ones were in semi in Bagnestown. So the final itself, um you know the ones you hit, the soft ones like John McDonald, they hit a shot like should have thrown my cap on it and there was a gap between me and the post and unfortunately the green flag was waving we were 1-2 to no score down after five minutes and um i actually looked at a video over there a couple of months ago there at the start of the lockdown and 
In fairness to Martin Dermody, he didn't spare me and I wouldn't blame him either, but uh, Martin and Leo done the commentary on it. And uh, so we bit by bit got back into it. Now, Leo Hughes did say that week in the preview, they'd done a video before the match of just the, the, the done a, uh, a preview of one of the training and Leo Hughes said in Balnoran, he says, John Townsend could be the difference this week in, in the county final and he was proved 100% right as John hadn't been playing every game and was playing full forward. John Townsend was a big, strong, physical man, fit as a fiddle and he got the goal with, I think, two minutes left in normal time and we ploughed on him, hit three points, I think, after that. Um, like that time, Declan Cavan and Pat Cord were midfield and like they were probably the best midfield in the county at the time and the boys were getting on all right again. I'm not wonderful. Kerry came in at half time, I think, and just... Games changed a bit and Nevin got a bit more into it and they weren't like, I think Sam only scored 2-6 and the second goal wasn't much better than the first. Now Charlie Warren took a shot across the goal and David Island and Junior came in and did, I don't know whether it got touched as this day but ended up in the back of the net and that brought back, I think, level. We were after going a couple of points up or I could have even posted a point down but there were different players getting scores in as well. Like uh, Brian Lawler got one near the end. Killed it, and he got a couple, and like Andy Dolan and Danny Kirk scored six points between them that day. So most of the forwards that scored, or if they didn't score, they were having their hand in the score. And um, yeah, it was Good unreal, like, and great thing in Banner that night. Like, it was the crowd in, in the clubhouse stuff, and like, it, was, it was unreal, no, I'd have to say that. Yeah, and um, you know, O'Loughlin obviously got promoted as well, so a nice little double. There was, there was plenty of beer drink uh, that autumn and winter, I'd say. Yeah, well, actually, funny enough, now what you said about the night the we won the intermediate football on a Friday on a Saturday night. And that time, the intermediate football final was nearly a good few years was on the night before the the, the All Ireland Senior Hurling final. So we ended up going to Crow Park the next day. Now some lads had tickets more hadn't, so we ended up going to we went up to Quinns to look at. Um, so I met Neve there and I don't know who else, but. Uh, but sure who was drinking was only three or four the same ones we were going to be facing in a couple of few a couple of weeks time in the count in the county final we even carried another home the next day like we were we stayed overnight in in in, in uh dublin and um but that's the thing about the GAA. like and the things are the matches are over or whatever it's the friendship you have like it's like we're cutting sides of one another then a couple of weeks later but yeah. you know best of buddies before that's Parked after, you know, you have to, it's a devil to beat someone, you know, in the county final, but you don't get too many chances. No, absolutely not. Um, so, well, Auckland win in 97 then as well, beating Palatine in the county final. A special one. After coming up straight away from intermediate, they win senior a year later. Not too many teams do that. No, and someone said Tin Ryland possibly might have done it in the 30s, could be done the other team. I, oh, I don't know whether that's true or not. Oh, who was the, who was the uh, I suppose, the big man behind that then? Training wise, where did the belief come from? Did you just literally go up? Most teams are trying to survive. He win it. Yeah, well, just to give it like go back, pull back a couple of years. Ninety back to eighty eight. The foot the boys drew something similar to a meet in Dublin. It was Rafael you know, Lachlan that year in three semi three semi final games. Um, extra time and everything thrown in. Um, not kick of a ball between the teams. The three nights. Um, probably funny incidents and all one of the games like you'd wonder these things didn't ha did actually happen unless you were at the game Paul Shee went off injured in one of the games stretchered off ambulance called and he gets out ambulance below Carpenters you know that that's <laughs> unless you're at the games you'd be wondering these things actually happened but that, that happened that night anyway and if you knew Paul you wouldn't pull past him but uh, they lost after the third game <laughs> Oh god. And that's that did happen. Um but the third after the third game, uh Rafaeli got over the line by a couple of points and they lost the final, I think, by a point to Arog. And that team that team was probably I mean Martin Whelan got injured probably a couple of years after that and we we got we got relegated in ninety two back to intermediate. Um we lost we lost the in the first round. Got really good in 92, back to Intermediate in 93, and we played Asking Bagnestown in the semi final. Cracker of a game. Hadn't played as well in a long time. 15 points to 10 up, two minutes to go. 
Tommy Dwyer's full four for Ascot, a goal from a free and another one, a bit like a Joe Sheridan goal, but it was a, it was a legitimate goal, it could have been a square ball, but anyway, Pat Moran refereeing, not too many square balls in Moran's eyes, and we lost by a point, and that was... Not too many cards either, something. No, <laughs> no, it would be scarce. Although you'd like to see a bit more of that, like, let things like, go. Slightly. Yeah, well you know where oh. you stand with them, and that's always said it like to people that don't know them, if they're playing a game, like, you, you could get away with it be here, you, you know, more ifs you won't, but um, that was a, probably no harm looking at long, a, a bit like, my well, Mr. Rangers losing to us in 2008, they learned a lot from it, it's, it's, it's a devil to lose, like, but that was, that day, no, that was, that, that was hard to swallow, because we're a way better team, we kicked it 15 points, like, and, 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 and lost by two goals, literally in the last minute, we just, but, and the thing about it was, I, I made myself go to the, Final. I, I always make sure if we lost the game, that go to see who be, uh, beat us. I don't know whether it was punishment or what, just to see would we have won. You never know. But they lost the final to to Fen, I think. After that, and um, so we lost ninety three. That was ninety three. Ninety four. We got to the final against Clonmore. I said we were no way fit. I thought compared to Clonmore, um, Jeannie Kelly was trying to smear all. Grass man, he, he was living over in Tamar actually there um, at the time, and he he lived in Dublin for a while. But he was he was a phenomenal footballer, seemingly back in the fifties and sixties with Air Og and uh, hey chappy he, he'd say to you like, and you could be no matter what age, whether they were seventeen or forty five, but um, great character. But I just thought Clonmore the blow us out of the water in the second half. They just I think we were actually win the half time, and then ninety five Ascabees in the first round. The Docks first year and in Bagnestown again. Now it was a, a wet night and they got a, a deflected goal, but they were they were just a little bit better than the night, or we were a bit worse. I don't know which, but it was just so ninety six were drew against Lockton in the first round, and that was just we got out of the skin of our teeth and momentum. We got a bit of momentum. Um, won a few games, then got to the final, beat the Blues by two points. John Head was I think seventeen, maybe scored a goal. After half time, and he had been he had been man the match in under sixteen final the, the year previous probably the best display of football I ever seen over a, a team where he was shouting for like say called O'Loughlin or Michael Davitz or Carlo and like he was John like was he was the up and coming thing and he he, he has proved it since like but um yeah we the league part of the ninety seven we played Ballinabran in the first game and I can remember that well for a couple of reasons that day I was getting driving lessons at the time and they were going woeful to be honest and uh, the driving instructor her husband and wife and Carol I can't think but she was tearing her hair off and it weren't going well and uh, she was saying she might get the husband to do, do a couple of lessons with me so he said you may cancel that test and I said to me oh I mean I won't be cancelling the test anyway but uh, we were playing Ballerana that night in the first round of the championship and uh won't be a goal, I think. But I remember Carl McDonald got a goal and I was I can't remember the exact what happened to the goal, but uh I thought we could have done better for it. And it wasn't in great form even though we won him, we went to Packy Gagan's wedding in the Bagnell, the afters of the wedding. And uh there was a lad got on me case that night and I had me brought out now. I only had a couple of pints two or three pints, but I just lost the rag with him and it just that that day sticks out but uh just between everything and to make a long story short, I passed the driving test the following Friday. Not after cancelling the test, so yeah, we got we um the group games then was three well three games in eight days. I don't know why. I know at the moment now with the the games going back in a couple of weeks' time or months' time is to go back. Um there's gonna be lads with three games in eight days and but that I don't know why exactly that happened, but we tried to get the matches changed. The match against Meister because we were literally down to the bones of a team. We'd lost to Clonmore, we'd beaten Tin Ryland, nothing spectacular. We had to beat Meister to get to the semi final. And it was on a Thursday night of the bank holiday weekend in August. And I was secretary at the time. And I remember going out to Jim English and we were trying to get the match put back to the Mund or something. Nevin was injured, John Hayden, Benji. Now I don't exactly know who played or who didn't play, but Nevin did play. We put him in full forward. He, like he. At this stage, we had kind of, we had changed, as in where 
Nevin would have played more games out the field in previous years. He was gone pushed back in a bit further close to goal. And there wouldn't be as much ball going in, but there was a better chance of being finished if the right man was in there. And that night, he nearly beat Meishler on one foot. And no, sadly that night, I think happened, might have helped us, I suppose, in the long run, Sean Cameron got his jaw broke against Fenna the same night, and he was out for the semi-final, but in fairness, I think Paul Donahue, I think, wrote in the ashes after we probably would have beaten Raphael in the semi-final with or without Sean Cavanagh. But uh, we beat Raphael with seven points, I think, in the semi-final. Um, that was the night after Clonmore had lost to Pal by about two or three points. So, county final, where did this come over? But uh, in fairness to the doc, he would have always said to us, we were as good as anyone in the county. And he wouldn't have been saying it every day of the week. He just would throw it in here now and again. And the fact that they were all gone over, they had won, had won five or six in a row, four or five. Um, they weren't playing Aero, they were playing another team who hadn't any player with a county medal. A couple of them had played in 86 with Pal got to the final again, Michael and Michael were in the same ball as us probably. Like Michael had got to a lot of finals and probably should have won more than one, but the doc says to us during the week, he says, well Lachlan never lost the county final. Like we'd never been in one, but we didn't know what it was, what it was like to lose one. So mm. um, he just said, the day that we got, the lead up to the final, like, we got the Nashes, the car, people come out and under interviews. That was part. Early on, we had it done in a couple of days, probably had to be done, done. And no, the doc uh, said, no lads, there was a, Paul Donny come out to the quarry, there was four or five of us working in the quarry at the time. There was Ned Sheehy, Benji, Seamus McLean, myself, John Hayden was in there for the summer. And Sean Filmini was the boss in three, he was, Stone Developments were sponsors and were good sponsor the county team after. Be football mad anyway. So Don he came out and done interviews and, he, and uh, Doc says, No lads, just do, do the four taken, two or three words, that's it. But uh, next minute we were looking around, we were walking back up the yard and there was no, no sign of Ned. So Ned she, he, uh they gave him more than a few words anyway, about half a page of a spread the week before the county final, but uh, the doc went mad for a minute and left it at that, so. Uh, and on to the county final then. Um, I think we kicked 10, 12 wides and Pal kicked two over the hour, but still there was only two points in it at the, at the end, and Bray Lawler got the goal, about 10 minutes to go. I didn't actually know if we were in the stand after the match, I hadn't a clue who scored the goal. Because the thing about playing the goal is you can see the far end of the field but you don't actually know who's putting the ball in the net. You don't mind as long as someone is putting the ball in the net. But I actually had asked someone in the stand who was after scoring the goal. And Brian Lawler was the answer. And one one over lad as my father said, sure he's not he wouldn't he'd be more of a hurler, wouldn't he? He wouldn't be that much of a footballer. But yeah, he'd done the business that day. For sure. Um moving on I suppose a little bit then to the next couple of county final appearances I think of 2003 in the two games against the Blues and uh, the first game was just a dour affair four points all I think um, you are in the goal that day uh, Sausage was at the other goal and I think Sausage caught a few balls over the crossbar if memory serves me correct and it was um, possibly one that got away you would feel yeah well like things have changed big like even 97 we ended up playing Aaron's Island the club championship in, in, in Dublin in Parnell Park and like Dublin teams had lost two or three finals to well they lost one or two and it hadn't to, to Airog so we weren't being taken lightly lightly and like we got her arses handed back to us that day uh, 522 to 6 points I think it ended up um, I can remember bits of the game as in like how busy it could be I, in the game it was beyond, like there was no tease that time like I tell you I had a pain in my right shin for a week after I usually had a, usually after a match of a football match I usually had a I had a fairly sore right leg after a match and that was just a, a, some sort of an injury I had it say but in my shin but by God it was quite sore after that and I know two things strike me that then we we got they just blow us out of the water they were a different level and that was you know, put your hand up and take that but uh I remember I took a kick out in the second half and Mick Jordan was behind Charlie Raymond. I got over his head and just was delayed. I said, something has gone right. And 
who two minutes later and got this ball in the goal and like we're getting bet by 25 30 points and this joker was after coming on as a sub corner forward and he done a uh, an ankle trip on me going out of the square and i just stopped up and i said it's like going to lay this lad out now or what but i didn't do it and thank god i didn't but just you know things were going bad enough and you're getting bet by that and so we just you know but the team then it's noticed Size wise, the team changed in a couple of years. All the young lads coming on, the Willie Minchins, Mark Rins, Paddy Hickey's, all these lads were all six foot one, two. There was no small lads anymore. And uh, 2002, and just, you know, you're, you're talking about 2003, and we had a build up to that, like that gradually happened, getting to the final. Uh, 2001, um, we lost to Clonmore, I think, after a replay in the quarter final. But 2002, then we um, beat Herog for the first time in the championship. In it was on a Sunday evening, and like Herog still had Jordy Morrissey playing, Willie Quinn, and now Willie got injured the same night. He he, he had a, a clash with one of his own as after about 20 minutes, and at this stage, with Alan Brennan, Brendan Lawler, or Mark Brennan, these guys were starting to come up at various. Uh, every year with someone else coming on and we're starting to push a small bit like we, we played that year we played St. Joseph in the practice now locking from Leash and they had the Kellys playing and like these guys were playing after winning all their minors and we were playing Leinster finals with, with, with uh, Leash and we drew with them over now locking I think Joe Hayden could have been training them at the time and now I'd be usually that I'd say the glass could be half empty but I actually thought I said to myself if we were able to stay with these guys they don't know how to go against their all, but the game against their all went very well. As in, we we just we got on top, stayed slightly on top, and Ren got goal with five minutes to go, and probably it won't be seven or eight points. First time ever beaten their all, like ninety one was the first time O'Loughlin ever beaten in Ireland. These are landmark things that has to happen for you to go anywhere. So that was two thousand and two. Now we can still see Darren Leonard's arm hitting the ball to score the goal in the semi final in two thousand and. Two, they, they won the final to beat Pal and 2003 then we ended up in the semi-final against Kildavan that went to a replay and a goal similar to the one we conceded in the 97 or 96 intermediate final this time with myself and Richie were looking at one another and Brendan Nolan Bunny Nolan came in and he was smaller than either of the two of us and we're not giants he came in and flicked it to the net and uh, the replay then we won by two or three points Finally, in the Blues. Sadly, from the Blues' point of view, Andrew Corden at this stage was no longer with us, and like a fantastic footballer would be an understatement. So, this is their first time back in the final, I think, without Corden. And this led the, the nucleus of the team that had that won the club championship. And like that, that week, I remember lads were going to be talking about what price or O'Loughlin were. O'Loughlin were 6 to 1 early that week to win the match. And they ended up at three to one. Now, didn't matter to me. I wouldn't put a penny on myself playing a match. But uh, the game itself, I was. I uh, must have been. That would be an understand. Four points apiece. Did sausage kick two points out of four? Uh, we left three balls in his hand. I made a save from Ray Walker about ten minutes to go. I barely got a finger to a ball. It was going in at the post. And that was. There was 4-3 and Sausage kicked the point to level and there was no score for the last quarter. And the, the final, the, we, if you're going to win the, if you're going to win the first day to do it, if you're the underdog. And the second day, like the first day of Mark Carpenter, a couple more of the big names ended up in the stand by the time the match was over. The second day Mark Carpenter was man the match, Richie wasn't man the match the first day, Carpenter was man the match the second day. Uh, Willie got a second yellow. Niall got a, broke his collarbone with a quarter of an hour to go. Just wasn't meant to be. But um, like the, the lads, Seamus Kinsley's, these lads, these were coming on. Like that experience, I know at the time, I can remember seeing seeing Rebecca Bambrick on the on the on the pitch after the match and the girl was distraught, like she was you know, her her father would have played like all the Bambricks with all Auckland and David like went on to win three medals then in the the years after and I can still see her on the pitch like and you know we're, we devastated for people more than yourself and like the last time I'd seen a Banbury crying in the 
And Dr. Cullen was actually 97 in the dressing room and seeing Willie Bar McNeil's father would be a tough enough old enough. We're the first say we seen in the we got back into the dressing room after winning the county final in 87 with Willie Barn because man I didn't know he, tears existed with him. He was a ball of emotion. So yeah, we whether it was one go away with the chance for the first day to answer the question. But the, in fairness to the boys, they learned from that and they, they plowed on and won three after. So. And you broke your duct then in terms of being a captain of a team that lost county finals in 2004. You were an every captain. He beat Ballin Killen in the final. And that senior championship always strikes me as one that seemed to literally come out of nowhere. Is that something you'd agree with? What was your take on that year? Exactly. Yeah, you nailed it there. Like it just... The earlier rounds I can't remember much of it. I remember we played Sam Hullins in Bagnestown and a terrible game. Could have been two ten to one eight, two eleven to one nine. And I remember we were back in Sean's and Lachlan. We're just saying, like how bad we were we? We lost me five points and no, I mean woeful bad. As in but still at that stage I wouldn't say we're guaranteed the league or the semi final spot. But if you beat Sam Mullins or Michael, they were the kingpins at that time. You were more or less you'd, you'd probably if you were beating them you were probably going to beat Carrolltown or Bagnestown, and no, no not no guarantee you would, but uh, we lost we lost Simmons that night and end up in the match against Michael then we had to win, and then Michael lost Simmons were out, and as we're saying well Michael well Michael bowed a knee here or whatever, and, uh, when the all I think he I think he got thirteen points the same same night now we won well. Won by seven rare points, and because still see the same ones crowd heard always are. You know, you, you're focusing on the match, but there's not that many in the terrace. You can see who's going, and I could see the boys going with five minutes to go. And we ended up in the semi final against Mount Hensor Rangers. Um, just one little thing to add in before yeah. this there was a game against Nave I remember, and there was big talk that time. Now, I don't ever remember a Michael team not trying, but there was big talk that yeah. Nave Owen weren't overly bothered by this game, they would sooner have saw St Mullins out of the championship. Um, you know, for the semi-finals onwards, it meant that he actually made the semi-final by beating Avon and beating him fairly comfortably as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Lawler, I think he hit 13 points. I don't know what the score was, but I think only seven or eight points in the wind-up. Now, okay, that can happen. As in, I said, with the, some of the games can be false in the league part. If you're five or six points down, they're not going to be trained that hard. They're going to be in the semi-final anyway. But uh, we went up in the semi-final against Mullins Rangers, and probably like the. The hurler or the footballers had certain has come through like at this stage like Alan Rennans, Mark Brennan, uh, David O'Leary, Brendan Lawler, Brian Nolan, Paddy Kelly, like you had a whole new you had it but you still had no I was still in the goal, Neil was still full back, Nevin was still centre back. Which probably is vital in three positions in the back, so we're kind of you know, you, you build your team around the, the centre of your team and uh I think we scored, was it f- coming 4 9 to 11 or 12 points? We only 5 or 6 points. They literally got a couple of goals. And now that week, I had two weddings, the two days before that. I had a full wedding and an afters of a wedding. And uh, by God, they were, long, they were long events, I can tell you that. The, the one on the, the Friday was a wedding in Kilkenny, a niece of mine. And there was actually a lot of Kilkenny hurlers at it um, from James Stevens and all Auckland's. And there was none of them drinking either. So I said to myself, sure, look. The two days before we weren't going to be drinking anyway, but um, I just you know you, you, you found it hard enough, but you, you weren't going to do it. It just was it made the day a bit longer, and the following day I had an afters of a wedding, and uh, so we beat we beat Rangers by I think it was four nine to twelve pints or it was four or five pints in it as so, well, and uh, we had a few pints after that in the Yari, definitely. But the county final was the following Sunday, so you hadn't much time to lead into it. Um, Okay, there was a couple of us had one man before. Not most of the younger lads had one, you know, that that, that represented the county or did one hundred twenty one or minors with the club. Like Brendan Lawler won all and fail of skills. He, you know, they won the minor ninety eight with Pat McNally. A lot of them would have won. Martin Keaton, um, you know, a lot of them. Edmund Keaton. They were all and all central positions on the team as well. Paddy Hickey, all these lads. So he had a good, he had a good knit of old and new and they were playing Ballon Killen. Um, now my mother's from Ballon Killen. that was 
be awkward if you st stopped and talked about it, all right, but uh, nothing you could do in that line of... So I, I knew most of the Valentine lads as in their, who they were, as in more than their name or whether they were from Cool in the Cup Hog or Ballon Killen or Lorm or whoever. But like they also had Thomas Walsh playing who was, to me at the time, was coming to be possibly one of the best hurlers Carl had in a long time. And uh, like on, on the day, we we'd win, we'd win the wind in the first half and we we hit a lot of wides the first half. There was a couple of points in it after half time. We thought it mightn't have been enough. Thomas Welch got a goal about 10 minutes in the second half and we got a goal straight after and that kind of killed Ballon Killen's momentum and like they had lost the senior football final I think with Fenna that year had it I think after a replay correct they lost uh, Ralph Billy yeah and um, they could have been their only chance of a football one as well you know and the, so a lot of them we felt when, once we got four or five points ahead we, we, we finished well and we, with strong players coming off the bench like John Carey was only a sub um, Bobby Daly come on the sub, Johnny Sheen, like, and these were lads, you know, they were good hurlers, they would have been good, good enough to start in any team, and uh, like, I was so focused on the game, and David Wall and we were good friends at that time, I didn't even know if David Wall hadn't started, and they actually came on the sub with about 10 minutes or quarter an hour to go, because we just, there's days like, when, you know, things were going well, and you, you just have that feeling you're going to get over the line, but like, regards to being captain, I know it was, it was a bit funny, like, losing three, it would have been, if you stopped and talked about three finals with three different clubs as a captain in a senior final. But uh, no, we got over the line, like the speech wasn't great after, but I didn't mind. Once we got up the steps, whoever wanted, because uh, we didn't get up in 96 with, or 94 with um, with Parnells and Ned Kay and myself were captains that day. And I said to Ned, look, I said, hopefully, I said, I'll go for the toss and hopefully you'll get the cup. And like that didn't happen, but Nevin was captain in ninety six. There was no one else going to be captain in ninety six other than Nevin. That was that job was never going to be up for for tender. So um, yeah, and then the club championship. Then we got, like as in ninety six, it's great you go to your county and then see what you're like, and that presents a new set of challenges. So you played our clock. You had a victory up there. Bernard Lawler took a big hit, bad bad injury, but somehow made it back for the other to ball game. Other to ball I had Liam Dunn, Martin Storey, Darren Stamp, some real household names. And Nevin was actually marking Storey that day. You're looking at two of the greatest hurlers that has been in the game. Yeah, and like Liam Dunn was centre back, key roster full back, the Paul Finn full forward. You said Darren Stamp. Now another lad you've not mentioned who I think would have made the Wexford team if he had a stead fit was Des Maiden. He, you know, he was a thorn or say that day. I think he scored with one, two or one, three. Jacobs as well. The Jacobs actually that day, yeah. they never got a poke of it. They, they were well Sean marked. Dunn marked one of them. I don't know which was Rory or Michael. But they, look, they had, they had county men everywhere. And you know, they were, they had, they'd won, um, they were winning titles year on year and they were building towards Leinster. And look, they, they, they didn't get there until a couple of years ago. Like, lucky enough, and great that Mount Leinster Rangers got there before them. You know, they took their chance there to beat them. And like the the that day we were level at half time, and six points all or eight points all. I don't think we actually scored the second half, but we uh, before the match we were warming up in the in the dressing rooms, and there must be no match before because we had we had the use of two dressing rooms, and Nevin and myself were inside. I, I, you might know us at this stage we call that by or their second name not their first name if they're but uh, we, we were inside poking around and so Nevin was getting wound up anyway and poking balls and I was stopping and one I didn't stop the window behind me stopped it so the window went in shit we went back out and said nothing I don't know whether the bill ever came to uh, whoever was in charge thing, but like just just to mention it, that, uh, that five pounds that are going a hell of a long way now. That yeah, I think yeah. From the start of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, just I don't remember whether we got the bill as I said, but uh, thinking of that, that was two thousand and four. Like, and Jim Minchin got rest money later. Say during the start of this this weird time we're in. Um, Jim was secretary in ninety six and. Uh, I had a bad accident in 2003 and like uh, just it was sad there lately like you had Jim Bob McGrath and Lachlan Bridge with the school teacher in, in the in the tech and would have been on the Lachlan team the one in 57 
won a hurling in 50, 56 or 58, I'm not sure. And Francis McDonald would have been a neighbour down here, would have been a savage car to support her. Like, and there were funerals that people didn't get to go out and we're talking about your time in the, in the in the jersey like these these men served their clubs with distinction and all around the place and you know i was sad that i'm just thinking of jim there now when you we're thinking of because i know if jim had been around and it was a bill Kem, i would have loved to seen the response because he would have got hove it some way anyway yeah one of the great characters of the game no doubt yeah and many of them we have and obviously we'd like to pass on our condolences to all who have passed uh this awful time as well that are no longer with us and Christy Kyo is another one obviously that passed on a good while ago but like well before his time as well you know just mentioning these people um moving back I know there's a great story Liam Dunn told Aidan Nolan not to or why did he not pull on one of his own men or something like that Aidan was Aidan was marking um yeah Aiden, know, you, you tell it better Aidan had Aidan had come home he could have been traveling for a while that year and Aidan would have been um, would have played in the county team at that stage, cornerback. I know definitely at the time I went back in 2001, he played one of the games against Kerry. You know, he got his finger broken one of them, so he didn't play the next day. And he he had been travelling or something. We came on as a sub in the in that match anyway. But the ball landed in the square. Hop, he didn't pull and Liam Don, well, where was Keith Rosser who it was, but Liam Don ate him. He says, "Why the fuck didn't you pull across him?" <laughs> one of his honest. So that was Liam Don. That told you. Like there was no, you know where he stood with Dunn, like there was, if he was going to, one of his honours was going to be getting the medicine. He said, why, he did, just, why didn't you pull on me team at best? Yeah, why, you can see why Gary Kirby got it in 96. <laughs> but, um, so let's, let's move on a little bit. We've so much to cover and we've so much covered already. But uh, I'm also very conscious of time as well. You moved on then and played in a junior county final in 2007, won that, and that's how you thought you were going to bow out. We'll come to that particular juncture and how that unfolded afterwards. But um, 2008 and Airbreed won the senior championship. You just started finishing up, surely, surely you regret it. No, not one bit. No, I never thought of it. No. Um, just circumstances change. If children at home, you're married, you're you have other things like it just right James Cole was coming on anyway so and James had been on the panel with Caroline what year did they get the Leinster final? 2006 2006 and actually that funny enough now that day they won the Leinster semi-final we were actually painting the house here or whatever we're doing we're doing uh, full Saturdays I wasn't looking at uh, Jeff Stelling unfortunately with Soccer Saturday at the time um, but the uh, we were painting here and I said, the semi-final was on in, in O'Moore Park against Offaly. And I said to Neil's father, we're all here doing painting and what, no, what. And I said, well, we'll go to this match. I said, we'd never get this chance again. And we're humming and hawing for half an hour and we decided, right, I said to Neve and Neve's mother, you watch the paint brushes, we're going to Port Leash. So what a great move it was because uh, Paul Gammond, Carl Coughlin started, James was sub goalie. Uh, like Parry was playing under the radar as Sean McRovers were, were his, were his uh, employers at the time, we we'll call it. And uh, so James played, I think the next day they played the Leinster final, they lost to, to Kilkenny, but like, no shame in that. And they played Tipperary in the qualifiers, and James was in the goal, I think it was in Nolan Park. And so I, like, I knew I wasn't going to leave him stuck, but I knew like, James was coming and he'd go goalie. And uh, look, no, no different than me. He 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 a, he a bit of a boob in the 2008 final from the sideline from Hickey's ball. I done it twice in '96. I forgot about when you win, so he he put that straight. He said the next ball came in under the crossbar. He hadn't cleared it, and uh, I know he he probably only years to experience that. But no, I would have had no, never cost me a thought. No, I don't know why, but I, you know. Just the best. In fact, in fact, I had two medals. I suppose if I had an air one, you could yeah, say you would, it would have been different. Did. Yeah, but, um, really grateful, grateful to what you had. So yeah. you ended up out the field then. There was a bit of a comeback. You were you were playing with all Auckland out the field, first of all. And um, got to a final, perhaps 1-1, one, one, did you? Did you win the junior medal then? With all the junior, yeah. The junior, well, Clarkey came along in 2004, transferred to us. Um, at this stage, um, Clarkey had been living up here for a while. So he transferred until, like, James, you couldn't get nicer. And I often... 
I often said Skitton that we sent Benji into the county panel to see could he source a goalie because Benji's sister is married to Clarkie and uh, done a fair, he done a fair job if, if that was a job I, I, Clarkie was a serious upgrade on me as a goalkeeper and uh, so 2005 I was automatically a junior then so the, the first match was against St. Ryland so it was Division 3 the All Division 3 and I was actually contemplating saying to the boys would oh, they let me out the field I said you know what let them do what they want they're going to put me in the goal put me in the goal put me in corner forward corner forward and the sideline the sideline so I got picked corner forward and we ended up the same day we won well enough and actually got a free there was a free about 30 yard, 30 or 35 metres out in the first half and uh, most of us were still taking the freeze off the, well they weren't taking them off the ground but it was the option is in, you know, a good while. But I ended up at the ball and anyway. I said, here, I'll have a go at the fake. We just went over the bar. So a bit like, is it the two Johnnies where you can come back join, you can even take the freeze. So I ended up taking the freeze that year for it. And we beat Kildavan in the Division 2 final, Division 3 final, sorry, in Ballon by two points and I scored 1-5. Well, the five points were all freeze and the goal was a tap in. And we won the Junior B against the same ones the same year three or four points actually today Tyrone B carry him on the all Ireland finals and uh, went up junior A then we lost the 2007 final to Fenna uh, now a lot of the younger lads were on it David Bambrick Michael Maney Carl Coughlin they were all starting to come on they were on the team that day we lost that by four points and 2012 we got to the final against their Oak and a rogue with a full forward line of Willie Quinlan, Chris Blake, Niall Quinlan and Huey Fitzgerald says to me in the dressing before the match, I was 41 at the time and you'd be expecting Mark a lad half your age at least, no I was going out, he says, literally says you man Mark Willie Quinlan. Now I don't know what it was like 15 years before that to mark him but by God I got some tour at Dr Cullen Park and like Niall and, and, and Chris were two savage footballers coming up you see last year I went to down there Og and we lost by a goal but like myself and Willie had a, we had a right whole game a, a right whole laugh during the game it might sound a bit silly but like Willie knew it was his last game uh, he didn't kick error score he boxed the point off me alright uh, so I can probably say I was the last lad to mark Willie Quinlan but by God I would not have liked being facing him when he was 25-30 because I got some tour that day like he was making room for the boys he was intelligent and uh, so that was they just, but the thing about the junior was I was playing out the field and it was a release as in you played all your life from the goal the pressure was off that's why I used to like the soccer as well you were playing centre back or centre midfield there was always someone else to pick up the pieces whether they did or they didn't another that was another day's work but um, yeah the junior was great like, and, and we the last junior game I played was about three years ago I was full back in the third team against Ballon got beat me about 30 points but enjoyed it immensely and last year the junior yeah thought to us about that i was going to just introduce this yeah. particular thing because this is really impromptu whatever about playing junior you played a bit of junior football but you hadn't actually heard for 13 years so right in saying that 12 or 13 year and yeah. then i will know where you get the call of duty yeah shane lowry had a had a british open wrapped up early on the sunday and all and they were playing carlton in carlton so uh, that was that evening at 6 o'clock I think so I says to Owen here we'll go into the match it was a dirty evening we're going on holidays the next day probably to go on Eve's way in the case we packing suitcases as well probably a bit of work to be done so drove into the car park and Adrian says have you got your stuff no I had a pair of boots in the car the whole time as in for training I says no he says we're 14 and usually the lad says you're 14 you're probably about 10 or 11 but we had 14 and that was including himself and Paddy Dermody and so I said, I have no helmet, I'll get you a helmet. So helmet got, had a hurl, hadn't worn a full face helmet since 1988. The old flip up ones wore it once. So we went out in the field anyway, it was spilling rain. At this stage, you know, going to be hung for sheep as a lamb because there was going to be murders when I go home. It's a, so we got drowned. The next minute, Sparks walked off the field. I'm not refereeing this match. The pitch is not marked. I said, "The Lord God, we're going to be." 
They're going to be killed over a match I didn't even play, I know. <laughs> so Shane Brophy came into the old dressing room and he says, where's that lad gone? And uh, we said, he's gone out the road. He said, the, the pitch is not marked. So someone rang him on and he came back, the pitch was marked, match was played. Played a couple of games after, we played Bagnestown in, in Bagnestown. And probably the best game I had in about 25 years, which before the, we played him in the semi-final, probably had the worst game I had in 25 years. But um, no, it was great to be back, like, it was great. Did end up with a, an injury, I don't know whether it was from that or work or what, but I ended up with a, I wasn't able to go out of the car one Monday morning, all right, but the hurling was blamed, whether, whether that was true or not, I don't know. But uh, look, you'd want for your club, whether it's football, hurling, soccer, whatever club you're involved in, they make up the numbers. And that's what was done, so it was great. Great to get back, like, and, you know, you see lads like come back, like Dickie Kelly, you see Huey Gann with a hurl, Michael Meany, Foxy here next door, like all great hurlers would have played under age, and, you know, it's, it's great to see, hopefully there's a bit of life left in a dual player, whether it's a junior and senior, one of each card, but hopefully. Yeah, okay, so a quick fire round. We have a couple of funny stories before we get to your teams. Luke's jumper. Yeah, Luke, Luke I would have went to school, or was, went to school with Luke, sorry. Would have went a lot of matches with Luke in my younger days. We had no car here, so Luke would have been either playing or secretary to the club or selector or whoever, and they played Palantine one year in, 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 in Aska with the mid-80s, and there was a bit of a, a ruckus developed on the bottom goal, and Luke, Luke was on the line, and Luke ended up in the row, and Luke's jumper ended up being kind of a V-neck, V-neck shape again, it was over, Brendan Hayden was refereeing it all, Brendan, I just let the, let the row sort itself out, it wasn't a, there was no repercussions from anyone, and that was the, Luke's jumper had taken a, a whole new adventure. <laughs> Round neck to a V-neck. Yeah. <laughs> Umpire and linesman. Yeah, in uh, 19, 1990, we won the under-21 hurling final on a Saturday night, and we played. We were playing a relegation playoff, a relegation loser group game, senior um, against Tullow. The following day, in Dr. Cullen, which was before the under-21 football final, so we played the the football game, won by three or four points, I think, and I think Tommy Neil was was short an umpire for the under-21 football final. And like these were, I was only 19, so those last two years older than me, I ended up doing umpire. I know Mark Dolan was in the goal, I remember, I was actually sent to him there a couple of weeks ago. And uh, like the weird things you end up with doing the GA, that was only the second weirdest thing I've ever done, uh, officiating the Dr. Cullen as in, were playing leash in the early 90s, going 93 or four in probably Division Two, and I was sub goalie, and I couldn't talk out, it was a lung infection or something. But no linesman turned up to the game and I ended up doing the line for the game. Um, I don't think that had washed now with uh, the, the, the games, the Gaelic Players Association, but uh, different times. I don't think I don't think it would wash either. Uh, Interfirms. Yeah, the Sugar Factory... Niall was in the sugar factory and he said, he said we're looking for a goalie one time and this stage I'd, I'd gone off the panel I think or maybe it wasn't there was something on the county panel but Martin Fitzpatrick was actually training Boat Carlo and the sugar factory or the Avon Moore and I said right I don't want to get caught for playing illegal here so Niall's father Niall was playing so I wasn't going to be put on as Niall so Niall's father Willie was working in the sugar factory so I said right we won't go we will be as legal as we can, so I, put, I said to him, put me in, I was Willie Barmer. <laughs> so we lost the match, but probably lost me 10 points maybe, and I played all right. So I remember seeing the Kilkenny people the next week, like, and Davin Moore would always had a big write-up of a match, and best for Cossets or whoever the Sugar Fetch was called, were Willie Barmer, <laughs> whoever. So, the reaction to that would have been good in the locality. Yeah, I, I must actually say to Willie, I don't know whether he copped it at the time, but... Um, yeah, so that's the crack with that. Uh, Balance Spittle. Balance Spittle, yeah, 1980, the year of the movement statue was 1985, was it? Um, oh, look, how a 14 year old ended up in a bus going to, to Cork with 55 women praying, I don't, I can't actually remember why that happened. But um, oh, look, we're playing Palatine the next day in the, the county intermediate football final, and we're below at the Grotto in. Ballon Spittle, along with about 20,000 people, it's a, 
and she was prayers going left, right and centre and I said I'll try one here, pray the whole Auckland win tomorrow and five minutes into the game, Jerry Gagan breaks a finger and about five minutes later Paddy Maher has gone off injured so I... No wonder if I intervention. <laughs> no, I, think I said any more I'll go down to the graveyard and go direct to someone that might, might have a better say. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Co-directed the source. Um, right, okay, we're on to the teams. Uh, we've um, obviously you're the you're the neighbourly guest, but because you play so much football, we'll, we'll let you pick two teams. Who have we gone with? Let's go down through it. Right. Um, I have to play in goal. So the full back line, uh, right corner back, John Carey, um, dual player, football in Hurling. Got on the All Ireland B team, uh, Pat Lawler got injured before the final and made the place his own and was midfield in the minor B or minor A final in 87 uh, at 15 years of age and was near enough man to match. Full back Niall, like we had a very good partnership I'd say for them years, full back and goalie. Um, we, you know, we had a good, as I said, it was good to have a he had a good nucleus of your team. Generally, definitely in the hurling made a fierce and had a great hand on him and he was safe as houses and fit as a fiddle. Um, just to point out, you're actually not related at all. And we're not related unless, enough. unless he wins the law. <laughs> uh, the other corner, Brian Lawler. Uh, Brian would have been the lad got me out of the county panel and would have been uh, instrumental in, in my love of Tina Turner. He, he ended up, he'd, he'd have Tina Turner playing the car every night going in back over from training. And to this day, if I hear Tina Turner, I can picture a Wednesday or a Friday night going into county training. Um, the half-back line, I have Sean Foley, would have been in school with him in, in the De La Salle, Robbie's all the brother, phenomenal player underage, unreal. Um, would have played with him in the college, we won a South Leinster B or C, I don't know what it was, against Carla CBS. Uh, centre, Johnny Nevin. Don't have to say a whole lot really, other than like, pretty, uh, pretty tough for granted playing with him. They was so good. Just there lately, there's lads picking teams for team of the year for this or top 20 that, and he's on every team. And has to be, deservedly. The other wing back is Dermot Nolan, Muxer from Lachlan. Would have played a lot of underage with him. Uh, would have been centre back in the minor team, one in eighty seven was only sixteen. Um, very good footballer, hurler. Uh, the raw materials of an unbelievable player. Probably just look didn't have the dedication, but that still he would have been the best player we had in the ninety four final against Michel with no training. Midfield, Mark and Alan Brennan, two next door neighbours. Um, Alan, I'd say the most skillful hurler I played. I poked around the ball with. Unreal wrists. Um, very, very good team player. Mark Brennan, then, like Mark in Gant with Mark in the in the in the hurling, ha, has it everywhere. Strength, skill. Captain to Christy Ring, Crop Park. Half hour line, Niall English. Um, like Brendan Lawler, won all Ireland skills. Um, his mother's from this area as well. Savage player. He was a year younger than me. He was captain actually the, year, the Blues team to beat us in 2003. I won't hold that against him. Centre forward Mark Mullins, another man like just like to go to Cork, he ended up being captain of the Cork team I think in 95 that lost to Clare like in the bizarre circumstances of the goal. Like things could have worked out totally different from him, for him. Won a couple of county medals down there. Like he was, he scored six points against Galway. He, he was getting three and four scores a game from play in, in county games. Uh, the other, Johnny Kavanagh, the other wing. Uh, Johnny, the first day, as I said, Johnny stood up and said, I'm a hurler, was the semi-final against Michel in 1987, I thought. And from then on, like, he was just, you know, he was, you know, guaranteed three or four scores from play, however, from freeze. Full forward line then, I went for David Doyle of St. Mullins, um, Tarrier, blonde hair, like, he just stood out a mile if he had the helmet on, but he was just, Lethal, like you just got needed a sniff of a goal, and often, often it was our nemesis John Bourne full forward. The same from Michel, sound as a pound, you couldn't get nice. Was captain in '92, um, 
he was only 21 uh, would have links up here we often text him there on the phone how's things going and he's in Boston you wouldn't get nicer and that's the truth Brendan Lawler then back to Brendan Paddy would have a lot of matches with Paddy his father over the years and Brendan was a bit younger than Keith and PJ were my age and, and like Brendan like he, he was just had it everywhere he scored a hatch against Offaly in a Division 2 league league match I said he scored the 13 points and then we had to beat Michel again to the to the semi-final and he was captain in 2008 um, no, that's leaving out like Sir Martin Keaton, Parry Gammon, Jason Hughes, Desi Shaw, Watchy, Jared Olin, Phil Meany, Des Murphy, Brendan Hayden. Okay, football. Football, right. Uh, I'm in the goal, so Richie Burke, cornerback. Uh, Richie made his debut in the, the ill fed game in Aaron's Isle, but that didn't, that didn't um, deter him from having a, one of the lads with four medals along with John Hayden. Um, like you just knew the ball went into his corner, you were, yeah, you were, you were okay. Niall Bamberg full back, similar to the hurling, safe pair of hands, only you'd be hoping he wouldn't kick the ball because it could get end up anywhere. The other corner, uh, John Carey, similar to the hurling, like he would have played anywhere as, because he was away in London so much. He was generally coming on as a sub in games and could be going on any, anywhere. And I, I have been cornerback because he played cornerback with the county and would have had a good good 30 or 40 games in the football at the end there. Half back like Johnny Kavanagh, like Johnny was a savage footballer, just his games tally alone, I tell you that, he was unlucky to be sent off in the match against Westmead with the, the rule change in, in the, whatever year that was, but uh, Johnny would have, no, Johnny and one other player on this team, I would have played him with Michael Davids if lads were wondering how to, how to run my team. Tom Conley was centre back, would have been more of a full back in early days, but uh, would have ended up back full back or centre back then. Was captain in '97 when we won the, the title. Um, brilliant footballer, played county as well there for a couple of years, got injured in the eight, eight before the Dublin game. John Hayden completes the half back line. Um, can't say a whole lot more than what John have said already. He shares a shared birthday with him. Um, he's won an under 16 final, man the match in that. Intermediate the following year, senior the following year, and played for Carlo for years. He's chairman of the club now. Midfield, Huey Gann and Mark Brennan. Um, Huey Gann was playing with us at 15, junior, when he probably shouldn't have been. And the raw materials of an unbelievable basketballer, footballer, seen him playing hurling last year. Could play anything he wanted. Uh, I think his three medals as well, Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan would have been uh, good enough to get any team football or hurling. Probably picked me his own. He 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 position wise could play anywhere. Probably at different stages in games could be brought from midfield to full forward, centre forward, vice versa. And but look, just savage player to have. Half hour line, Johnny Nevin on the county team for all Auckland from all Auckland for he was the sole player from all Auckland for. 10, 12 years after Martin McGill and Tom Conley were gone probably. Carl Coughlin would have played him in the junior final in 2007. Played, he was a knockbag team, so it'd be hard enough to get a knockbag team, you know that yourself. That's a serious statement and I found him a bit like Declan O'Sullivan with, with Kerry. A lot of good play had to go through him. And the other would be Benji. Benji O'Brien uh, would have had around a lot together and like Benji was centre forward in 2000 or in 97. And would have been the old centre forward, making holes for other lads, but still had a good left and right foot, taking scores. Jerry Kavanagh, corner forward, would have played with Jerry Minor. The best left foot I've seen in the county in my time, just lethal. Give him an opportunity, uh, deadly. Like I think Lachlan probably played in our hands in 96, they played him wing forward instead of corner forward. I didn't mind that. Paddy Hickey, full forward, left and right foot. Brilliant player, a lot of injury problems early on and got there eventually and kind of went through a lot of work to get back a lot of years and finally go for Seamus Kinsla, just knew where the goalposts were, captain of one of the teams, won the county final, um, guaranteed 6-7 points from play and freeze. I'm leaving off Davy Dolan, Roger McGrath, Willie Minchin, Jerry Hickey, Johnny Fitzgerald, Martin Whelan, Dickie Kelly. So. That's the, Big that's the teams. Um, yeah, it's hard to pick 15. 
yes definitely one of the true characters of the game no doubt is Stephen Barmerick and very much worth a follow on Twitter as well at the handle Bob's Cleo a man who is very fond of the terrace um, he's probably one of the few supporters out there that will just go to the terrace rain, hail, sleet or snow a terrace man true and true a car man true and true and obviously an air breed and a Lockley man true and true as well hope you enjoyed that episode we've only got two more left in the series would you believe and two very interesting ones still to come Again, thanks for all the feedback, especially in relation to last week's episode where we touched on obviously very deep issues and those messages that came in to myself and Simon very much appreciate during the week and thanks for getting in touch. Don't forget to subscribe, as we said, on your chosen platform and the five-star ratings. I keep saying it every week, but the five-star ratings on Apple Podcasts, if you listen there or iTunes, do help. Your name doesn't show up. It's fine. You won't be hung out to dry or anything like that, but the five stars do help in getting us up the rankings. Again, thanks to our kind sponsors, Corcoran Precast Tanks. We do it all again next Monday with another episode of My Time in the Gansey. Until then, take care.